Thanks again for being here. And if you don't mind um, talking to us a little bit about why you're running, what qualifies you to take on this role as a city council representative, and if you're elected, what your highest priority would be. Thanks for inviting me for this uh, interview. Hi, my name is Isaiah Hester. I'm running for District 5 City Council. We've come a long way, 12 years of Russell Gilbert, but I want to move the needle further. I want to take us on further the higher heights. I have a servant's heart. I want to be the voice of the people. I want to advocate for District 5. I'm a fighter. I want to fight for $15 an hour in benefits for city workers who are working two and three jobs. I want to fight for early childhood development education so no child can be left alone. I want to fight for small businesses so the people in District 5 can begin to have small business and build reality, not only for themselves, but their children, their children come. That's why I'm running for District 5 City Council to, to build back better, stronger families and stronger communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hester. And our first questions are gonna be about the budget. Um, the first one is that the city's estimated to lose about $8 million in revenue in the 2021 fiscal year, that is mostly due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So as mayor, how would you balance a difficult budget in the 2022 fiscal, I mean, sorry, as district count, as a member of the council, how would you work on balancing um, a budget for the 2022 fiscal year um, under the stress caused by COVID-19 as well? Okay, firstly, I would work uh, alongside with the mayor, with the uh, new mayor, and work with the other city council persons on the uh, city council. The only way to trim down the budget is to cut either operational expenses or the problem to cut funding from certain organizations that support the work of the city. So, so at this point, we have had to fully examine the budget to see where the Fed is because it is true, we can only, we can do more with less. I think in 2022, we end up have to work with less because of the COVID, COVID pan, pandemic, once in a lifetime pandemic. Thank you. So as we near a year since the virus um, reached Chattanooga, or at least was first detected here, businesses and individuals um, have, have struggled due to the impacts of COVID-19. How would you provide aid to those businesses and families who've been hit the hardest by the pandemic? And are there programs in place you would like to see the city keep? And are there other programs that you would like to, to see the city add? Okay, I, I, that was a great question because COVID has definitely taken a hard, those businesses have, have taken a hard turn, economic turn from especially women, women owned and minority owned businesses, small business. We must support the bedrock of our community. Our local community are the small business. So what we'll do is I would create programs or grants in order to help, help build up those, build, those uh, business again. And I think there, there are many programs we should keep and some we should, we should do away with right now. I, I uh, right now, I, I would examine those programs, and and, and at at that time, we'll see where we have to make those changes. Thank you. So, moving on to a new topic, paving and transportation consistently rank at the top of citizens' concerns, according to annual studies done by the city. So, what transportation or infrastructure goals would you have if you're elected to the council? I think one of the uh, things we should add to, you, you're right, that uh, we have a lot of problems with, uh, with our roads and, and, and it's one of the biggest issues from the people in District 5. They say that, that the roads are the major concern for us. I think one thing we should invest, we are the city, city we are, we were called the choo-choo city. I think we should invest in train and rail. I think that would 
that would be a, a cleaner, um, it would be cleaner for the atmosphere with less cars on the street, less uh, gas is burnt, and we should invest in, in train and rail, trail, train and rail. That's one route we should go in the future. So moving on to businesses, questions about businesses in the economy. And I think you, you referenced this earlier, but city labor unions and, and um, others support a $15 minimum wage for city employees, which Mayor Andy Burke had planned on implementing before COVID-19. Do you support this or any I, other specific pay increases and why or why not? I wholeheartedly support that. It's part of my platform, matter of fact. And I know it's part of uh, President Biden, part of his platform too. My plan is this. I noticed as I was canvassing um, all over District 5, canvassing Holly Hills, canvassing um, Indian Hills and, and Brainerd Manor. And a lot of the city workers say they're working two and three jobs just to make ends meet. I propose that we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. So those who, who are working the hardest for us, those who are working from sunset, sometimes the sun sundown and, and in between, they need to benefit by $15 an hour. That would definitely bring more to our economy and it'd be safer for them. A lot of them working two and three jobs just to make end meet. And that's, that's not healthy during this COVID time. Thank you. Thank you. So in, in 2019, 40% of Chattanooga households were considered housing cost burdened, meaning they pay more than 30% of their income for housing or rent, and therefore may struggle to afford other necessities. How would you address affordable housing if you're elected to the council? I think affordable housing is indeed very important to us. America, we are the most wealthy country in the world. And I think uh, one way we could retrain people we could uh invest in our in our in our citizen we we can um we, we should put more time and effort into develop programs and policy that would would help them through this this crisis. this is a once in a lifetime crisis we should do all we can to to help those uh to achieve the American dream by having affordable housing. No one wanna lose their home. So we should devise methods, policies in which they can keep their house and be able to uh, do other things. So related to that, there's also a number of Chattanoogans who are experiencing homelessness. So how would you work as part of the city council to further the city's progress toward reducing homelessness? Like I said earlier, America is the most wealthy nation in the world. We should try to provide for the least of those because a lot of those who are homeless as I canvas District 5 are, a lot of my veterans, those who, who, who serve country. I think one thing we could do, we can partner, partner with uh, Chattanooga Housing Authority and put them into uh, housing and we can also not housing, maybe we can uh, devise uh, training efforts for, so they can be, so they can have jobs too. Nothing like having a job and somewhere to go, somewhere to live. Because everybody should, should have a chance of the American dream. Thank you. So downtown Chattanooga, which was once considered a showcase and people came here from other cities to kind of study how it was revitalized. Um, it is struggling to hold on to businesses. There are a lot of like empty storefronts there. Um, how do you think that can be improved? And what factors do you think have made downtown less appealing to businesses? And also, could you do you support the business improvement district? I, I, that was a good question. I support the uh, business improvement district. And I think one thing, and I still say Chattanooga is a great place, a beautiful place. Downtown is a beautiful place. We've come a long way since I've lived here in Chattanooga. I think one way we can improve things in Chattanooga is by diversity and inclusion. Invest in more, uh, more of the uh, 
people in the city, bring them back into the city. Just like I saw where they have the setup for the, uh, for the trucks, have the food trucks. That was a great idea. We need to be more innovative like that and bringing those type of uh, ventures into uh, the downtown area to attract more people. And maybe, secondly, maybe we can have more festivals downtown to, to attract more people. Festival that's gonna attract a variety of uh, diverse groups to our city because Chattanooga is a very progressive city. And we got, we got to, we got to bring those dollars to our city to uh, improve our downtown area. Thank you. So moving on to public safety, in 2020, Chattanooga saw an increase in gun violence, as did a lot of cities across the country, largely attributable to COVID. Um, how would you, um, as a member of the council, work to lower violent crime rates in the city? That is a good question, a fair question regarding uh, public safety. And I did a study myself. I uh, looked at the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and they indicated that most crimes in 2018, everything was going up, everything was going up. Uh, burglaries, uh, simply, simple assaults, uh, rapes, homicide. Where all that was going up. Then I further saw that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI was saying that 40% of all the uh, calls for the peace officers involved mental illness, people with mental illness. So I think one way we can, uh, and it noted that there's a high percentage of Chattanooga crimes and not solved. And I, and I think as a, as a leader in the city, if I was, when I become city council, I would suggest that we involve social workers, we involve uh, case workers to deal with those who, who have mental illness so that our police department can help solve some of those unsolved uh, crimes. Because they noted that Chattanooga at that point is the 23rd most dangerous city in America. So we, we, need, we, need, we need to help out our police as best we can. I think that's one of the solutions we can, we can take. So also um, related to policing, activists this past summer here in Chattanooga and across the country um, protested police brutality and demanded defunding or divesting from the police. Would you consider supporting um, efforts to defund or divest from the Chattanooga Police Department? Or um, in what ways would you consider law enforcement reforms? Okay, uh, that's a fair, another fair question. And I looked at that and I studied that, that police and also, in my opinion, I think I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a black man. And I see that there's no reason to defund the police department. We need to reform the police department, maybe investing in diversity and inclusion as far as training and taking, taking uh, military style uh, guns from the police and taking guns all together off the streets from civilians. And I'm, uh, I wholeheartedly believe in community policing. There's in every neighborhood in District 5, our neighbors are police officers. And there was a time growing up, we knew our police officers. And, and they knew every little boy at the center. They knew all the, the old ladies in the uh, neighborhoods. They knew everything. If we had that rapport, that, that type of community policing, I think that would, that would definitely improve the condition of this city and any city in America, when when we uh, go in that community that the community style policing. Thank you. So, um, also related to the um, the protests that we saw over the summer, some folks have questioned the conduct of activists, citing some incidents of vandalism, disruption to business, and confrontations with the police, and others have criticized law enforcement for restricting access to public areas for surveillance 
on private property and also for the nature of how some arrests occurred. Um, if there were similar protests during your term on the council, how would you weigh restrictions for activists and police presence? And like, what would you have done differently? I think one thing, uh, um, let me say this, it, it is a right for the protesters to be involved, the young people to engage, to uh, demonstrate. But I often we find there's infiltrators in those groups just to start trouble. I think one thing we should do is try to monitor the, the crowd, the crowd, the folks in the crowd. And all the type of technology we have now, they can, they can have that face recognition uh, people uh, who are troublemakers, we should ban them from those type of uh, demonstrations. Even if uh, the ones who are the um, spearheaders of the demonstration, we shouldn't allow them to demonstrate publicly if they if they are the ones who are causing the problems. That's one way we we could fuse diffuse some of the uh, problems from the start. Okay, thank you. Um, public input was also a part of the discourse, the public discourse this summer. Do you support the current city council restrictions on public input during meetings? Or do you think that these policies should be changed to encourage more public input? I think uh, we've uh, asked, asked another great question. I think it, as far as uh, input, as far as coming together, I think we can all learn from one another. Uh, long, long as they are doing it decently and order, orderly, I think they should be able to express their opinion in our meetings. If, if, they, if they're not so-called troublemakers, if they're not causing a nuisance to our meetings, then they should be able to, uh, to express themselves in a decent manner. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to some, some other um, areas, have you received a COVID-19 vaccine? And if not, when, you're, um, when you are allowed to, will you, will you do so, like when it's available to your group? I will, I will. I was reading an article uh, yesterday. Uh, I understand the fear of, of a lot of Blacks because of uh, historically, where the Native Americans were given uh, disease blankets and where Tuskegee Airmen were given um, syphilis drugs. To, and, and I understand our, our discord, but, but I think right now we're, 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 we're safeguard against those type of, uh, type of things. And I'm going to take the test. My wife is already, she's a health care giver. She's already taken both shots. And I got to man up and do the same thing once my chance comes. Well, good for your wife. That's great. Um, so what do you think that the relationship between the city council and the mayor should look like? And will you work, if you're elected to the city council, to cu cultivate a relationship with the mayor, who, whoever that ends up being? I think there should be a good relationship between, between the mayor and the city council. The mayor is the overseer of the city and we should uh, build a rapport with him in order to uh, bring about policies and procedures that would impact our city, our community, so we can progress and grow as a city, uh, Chattanooga. And so one last question, would you support public money for a new Chattanooga Lookouts Stadium? Now, of course, that has not yet been requested, but, sh but there's been discussion of it. Like, should some a, a request come up, would you support it? I would support it. I, uh, I went to games at Ingham Stadium when Ingham Stadium was up. I went to games at the uh, Tennessee, uh, First Tennessee over there. And I, I would support it. We need that type of... Uh, Outlet. I know there's a lot of sports fans here in town. They they love to go see the lookouts. That's a great outlet where we can 
then we can do it orally. We can express ourselves and cheer on the, the Chattanooga Lookouts, our, our, our team, be part of a, it, it makes, it connects all us together, regardless of your, your race, your ethnicity, uh, whatever. We, we come together for, a, for the Lookouts. I love the Lookouts, matter of fact. <laughs> Big fan of Lookouts.